Oh yeah, they're still trapped in the radio station. What's wrong? They said they want to negotiate. No. It's just one man. He's unarmed. Yeah, which man? Forgive me for being skeptical. Is that Denny Brosh? This is gonna be a sweet reunion. <laughs> there we go. There's the Denny that I want to see. Do you think that there's any way I could see my husband? You can't see him. It's too dangerous out there. You wouldn't want to go where he is anyway. I know it's tough, but please be patient. Yes. She's totally in the dark. I didn't think about that. I feel bad for her. Episode 60, Eye of Heaven, Gateway of Earth. Damn, what a title. So, here we go. You mean to tell me that you reject the truth? Yeah, exactly. And listen here, don't go thinking you've won just because you got us here. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Escaping is futile. You're already deep within my stomach. Stomach, huh? Well, I guess the container is bigger than Hohenheim thought. May! What are you doing? I've come a long way to talk to him. Envy told me that you're immortal. <sighs> so you're not denying it? <sighs> That's all I need. I'll handle this one, Alphonse. <gasps> What? Not on your own. He's too powerful. By yourself? Yeah. Fine. He'll be all right. Just keep the smaller homunculus out of my way. That's no easy task. Pride is sort of everywhere. She makes it sound like he's the easy one to <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> but he's weakened somehow. Well, look at that. We can use our alchemy. Huh. He ran. He didn't even try to use his shadows. That's definitely a good sign. Yes. Don't don't take that as a good sign. Don't know. Why must you rude children keep destroying my home? You should behave like proper guests. It's funny how in his way, father's kind of a materialist. Like he cares a lot about his environment, which is a very human thing. So much for proper guests. Now give me your stone! <laughs> wow. I did not request your presence and have no need for it. Now leave. <laughs> Look at Mei Chang actually putting up a fight. No, young lady. He's not actually trapped. May! I thought you would never get hurt. Because she's a child. <laughs> oh no, what am I how could I make that mistake, especially in this show? The fool I am forgetting about Nina. They seem to be attacking MP. <gasps> Hold it! <gasps> Pardon me. We simply do not have the time to explain. Please forgive us. He's so nice. Help me! Please don't hurt us! We're sorry for intruding. Oh no. We, we just have a question. Can you tell us? Is this your house here on the map? What are they doing? I hope everyone's doing all right out there. Is this the They're place? not it really. Sure is. No doubt about it. Oh, it's a point in the circle. Interesting. Are they trying to do like a reverse circle or something? Counter circle? There's something rather comforting about facing death like this, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> what? Nothing else even seems to exist outside my pure instinct to survive. Rank, personal history and birth, race, sex, the name given to you. It's all meaningless. This is the only thing that's real. To fight on behalf of my own life and nothing else. I've never felt so complete. <laughs> wow. I guess you could say I finally arrived. That's interesting and not quite what I expected for Bradley. I mean, one of the things I really like about him in the finale so far is that the gloves are off, right? Throughout the show, he's been so calm and graceful and domestic. And so him getting the chance to show his full power and actually be engaged in battle has been one of my favorite parts about the finale, especially him taking on the tank, right? Like that's unforgettable for me. As for this talk about feeling alive and how he's finally arrived, I guess this is in some way an answer to a question I've had for a very long time, which is who is Bradley really, you know? I was wondering where he would fall because he's the only part human homunculus. He doesn't seem totally in line with father's vision. Although in the finale, he certainly has been to an extent, right? He does care about his wife. At least I'm convinced that he does. And so on some level, I expected him to sort of diverge from expectations and to be his own person. In a way, this is that, like he doesn't really seem like he has a side right at this moment. You know, right now he's focused on fighting Scar. So like he said, you know, he has arrived. Like this is, I guess, the real Bradley. It's interesting that his purpose is battle. I mean, I guess that's what he was, you know, born and raised for. And I guess he's been forced to play games his whole life and hide his nature and 
play politics and be a figurehead, but the guy's got passion. Still going strong, even though he's fatally injured. <laughs> Damn. Oh god, that was gruesome. Yeah, it's just because he's injured. You look surprised. He did creation! When I considered the enormity of what was at stake and what I could do. I relented. I accepted my only choice. He did the other arm. My brother's circle of reconstruction. I've accepted both halves of alchemy. <laughs> you miserable humans never give up. I'll give you that much. <laughs> Damn, he likes it though. He likes the challenge. You know, on some level, even though he's very critical of humanity in these episodes, I feel like it comes partly from a place of respect. Maybe this is me still putting my own thoughts into Bradley, but the way he said that there, it felt a little bit like admiration. I love the fact that Scar accepted the other half. I was a little bit slow on the uptake there, but yeah, he added reconstruction and clear metaphor there. The fact that he was so hell bent on destroying everything that was the target of his anger and then switching that to use his abilities to make changes in the world. It's so interesting because I remember back in the beginning, he said he hated alchemy because it was against God's will. But to me, that was sort of a masked reason. Like the truth was he was just hateful and was looking for excuses to punish others. That argument never really held up. It's been such a crazy journey for Scar. This in a way feels like the final piece. Winry, it's been a long time with her wrench. I have a really bad feeling about this. Get over there and help me. What about Pride? I don't even worry about him. I can handle him on my own. I feel like the show respects the villains so much that they the only way it makes sense beating them is if they're weakened. <laughs> Young lady! Did he just make a father gun? I would rather you not keep squirming about, Hohenheim. <laughs> It's a good thing Al <laughs> didn't take his real body. What's the matter, Pride? Your attacks are a little more half-assed than usual. <laughs> Try not to get too confident. You haven't fulfilled your purpose yet, so I don't. <laughs> that means you still can't. Kill right, he can't kill him. Risk. You don't exactly have much experience in fighting those who are smaller than you. Oops. Oh damn. You overlooked the simple fact that since I've always been small, and I did the fighting. <laughs> I know exactly how a rock is gonna try to win! <laughs> <laughs> he finally owns it. Maturity. It appears the time is upon us. The eclipse is pretty much done. Or complete. So what now? It's time to put you to work, my sacrifices. The time has finally come. We've got to get to the center of the circle. Please! What I hear? Quit acting up! This delusion still? You were never gonna be there. Please do it! We'll be swallowed! Come to think of it, that's what Father or the dwarf in the flask has been doing this whole time. It's exactly the same as Xerxes when he convinced the king that he would be in the circle. Hurry! You know, he might have a better chance surviving now than he ever did. It's finally time. It's crazy. This planet of ours, have you ever considered the possibility that it might in fact be a life form? <laughs> Actually, it would be more accurate to refer to it as a vast nervous system. One that's retained its every memory since its inception and has witnessed the universe unfold. Just think of the massive quantity of information that such a system would hold. But an even better question, how much power could one gain if they opened that system's gateway? Have you ever considered that? Think about it. I have not. <laughs> and now that I have you gathered, I shall use you as sacrifices to open the planet's gateway. So the planet is a life form and has a lot of information. And he wants to what? Sacrifice the planet to open the portal? He refers to the planet as a living thing or a nervous system and a source of information. And I can see that to an extent. Like there is gonna be a lot of information contained on the planet and all of its life forms and 
everything the planet has ever been or come in contact with. One thought I have about this, which might not in any way be connected to his plan or what he's thinking or saying, is that it seems to me to be somewhat of a mistake to think that there will be more from planet than there will be just from like life and humanity, you know? I think about this sometimes when I think about the pursuit of knowledge in general as it applies to us. Sometimes I think there's this idea we have that true understanding for us or true meaning will come from a better understanding of the world. And we place a lot of importance on like facts and trying to understand objective reality and even science. And I think those things are really interesting and also really important when applied very specifically to certain problems. But I think there's also a coldness in thinking that the world is totally material in that way and that any meaningful answers as humans can come from that kind of pursuit, if that makes sense. Father, despite being very human himself, is disgusted with humanity and it seems like he's thinking that there's going to be something greater to be found in a world of like facts or information or material existence or something like that, when actually there's a very real chance that's a total dead end. I feel like you can go all the way down that road, right? Like you can understand a tremendous amount about the world and material existence and ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to arrive back at the, the exact same question that you had in the first place, which is who am I? Why am I here? and how do I become the best human being that I can be? How do I connect with life and connect with the universe as a conscious human? Like sometimes I feel like all the answers to the questions that actually matter as humans have already sort of been addressed or already sort of been found, but are just very hard to live, very hard to learn even before that and very hard to incorporate because real wisdom is very difficult and it takes an active pursuit of it and it takes a lot of pain and it takes a lot of like death in some forms. There is an exchange that needs to happen. There does need to be the death of certain ideas and the death of certain aspects of oneself. And so when I see Father trying to get like a neural network or information or whatever out of the earth, it misses the point in a huge way. He's not going to become greater than humanity by doing this. In fact, I feel like he's pursuing something lesser than humanity, something colder, less godlike. You know what I mean? Science is great for like construction and improving you know, the material existence of human lives, but it doesn't and probably never will answer the fundamental questions of human existence. That is an individual's burden. And so that's what I think of when I see Father talking about this great power that is the neural network of the earth. I mean, who cares? There's something so much better already that he's discarding, which is his humanity. But he can't see that because of his arrogance and his pride and his resentment. I mean, pride suddenly makes a lot of sense as his predominant sin. I mean, this is all very prideful to think he can do better than what he is and better than the characters. He can't, he never will. All that being said, Oh, look who it is! Where'd he come from? Yeah, he came from the front gate, I guess. Hope you don't mind me using it for myself. This world will finally belong to me! He got him. Surprise. Greed wants what you have. <laughs> hmm. I was expecting you to make it. Yeah, he's not dead. I know you too well, my son. Yeah. I mean, credit where it's due. That you were born from my extracted avarice? He does know human nature. Anything that he just doesn't like it. To desire, I can assure you that I desired it first. Mm. Good point. They are father after all. I feel like they're misunderstanding some, you know, essential nature of father's composition because it's nothing, nothing has an effect. I mean, he has a philosopher's stone, but. The very center of this world is right here. Whoa. What are you gonna get out of this though? Is this even gonna what work? The hell's going on? <laughs> Great reaction. What the hell is going on indeed? What is this? Oh, they didn't get to finish their fight. Maybe there's a chance for Bradley after all to do something surprising. Um, so yeah, this is happening. <laughs> There's something very hypnotic about this whole thing. Now that I've obtained enough power, I will open up this planet's gateway. Yeah, so now we spread to the much larger alchemical circle that Sloth built. I mean, it, it looks awesome. What's happening? Oh wow, they're actually sacrificed. 
Uh, weren't we supposed to stop this from happening? I'm shocked this is... No! No, no, this is all gonna be reversed. There's no way. Oh my god. I think it was last episode or the one before that, I'm like, well, you know, better than them stopping Father is, like, us getting to see Father's, father's plan. This is not exactly what I wanted. I didn't want to see everyone die. This is farther than I thought that would go. I thought it would start and then it would be stopped, but this is, like, the world is actually being sacrificed, which is insane. And having to see these characters just die is, is nuts. No, not, not Winry. What's happening? Oh, next time I see you, Hohenheim, I'm gonna slug you. <laughs> Save us, Ed. Come on, Ed. Someone do something. But the fact that it's this bad means it can be reversed somehow. Right? <laughs> it's like a literal door. This is... Wow. Big boy father. Is happening that is a giant <laughs> portal I will no longer be bound to you or your consequences yeah good luck with that I mean props them for getting this far but Oh my god. <laughs> wow. So first of all, that was really beautiful visually, especially with the music and everything. That was a really amazing scene. It reminds me a lot, obviously, of the end of Evangelion, right? It all comes tumbling down. It all returns to nothing. I just keep letting me down, letting me down. <laughs> it's a common device that you see, especially in anime. But it's something that doesn't get old for me. Like, I love it. And it's something that I've even thought about. You know, I've thought about, like, wouldn't it be cool to be more than human or, you know, to have the powers of a god or whatever? What's the appeal, ultimately, of that kind of thing? There are a lot of reasons to want that, right? Like, to have influence to have power, to reduce the amount of pain in one's life, like in Evangelion, to have knowledge, to be significant or respected, to have answers, you know, like there's just so many things, but all of those things are human and are things that we can already kind of pursue. Father is working so hard to get away from being human in the most human way possible, like looking for ultimate power at others' expense. That is such a human thing to do. It's like just the worst aspect of humanity. It's the side of humanity that rejects its own existence or refuses to find its own value, which is more common than I think it should be. You know, like you hear a lot of people talk about humans as like a virus or a bacteria on the planet. There's something so dark about that. I mean, it's certainly true that humans do terrible things and are limited and have some negative impulses like the seven sins, right? But that's only one half of the equation. The other half of the equation is that we're part of the all, right? And our existence on this earth is not an accident. It's the result of a long chain of natural processes. And there's a beauty in that as well. So ultimately for me, you know, watching this kind of thing, while it's really cool, while I understand that drive, it's kind of pitiful. And it's kind of sad that that's what, what father wants. I mean, it looks like he might actually accomplish it, but I know that he'll be punished for it in some way. Maybe figuratively or maybe literally, but it's gonna happen. And that is the price you pay for arrogance. That is the price you pay for pride or thinking that any any kind of material gain or power gain is going to answer the big questions that I alluded to earlier. It just seems to be father's misfortune that he can never see the beauty in humanity, that he can only see the most horrible aspects and that he hates himself so much that he's willing to go through all this to try to be something more when I'm, you know, I'm convinced that on some level, no matter how much power he obtains, he's always going to be lesser than the principal characters. I'm not religious, but one thing that kind of dawned on me very late is the idea that man is created in God's image. And my interpretation of that for a very long time is that, well, that means God has two arms and two legs and, you know, resembles a human and that our physical appearance resembles God's physical appearance. But there's something a lot deeper than that, which is, you know, something like all is one, one is all, where we're made in God's image because we're a reflection of the natural law and natural order of the universe. And not only that, we're a conscious part of it. So there is something divine in that way about 
humanity, I think. And so to see the whole species as like a plague on the earth or a species that is just intrinsically evil is just missing so much of the, the picture. But anyway, he is succeeding, it seems. He is getting a lot of power. The only thing I can think that might get them out of this is what the uh, the Ishvalans were setting up. They were doing something, counter circle or something. Or Wrath, Wrath making a last minute save. <laughs> I'm really attached to this idea of like Wrath being someone, but it's probably not to be. Anyway, that's the end of what was one of the most exciting episodes in a while, and that's really saying something. I'll see you next time when... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs>